once again to Community Viewpoint. I'm John Pollock, your host. Maria Hurst is to my left, your right. And the lovely Amy Noel is Hello. at the Hi. far end. And you could see by the backdrop, this is our Hall Halloween uh, special, just like the Simpsons special. They, they were on the other last night. Everybody was, all the cartoons were having these specials. So mm -hmm. this is your live uh, special Halloween event. And it's my either eighth or ninth anniversary doing this show because I started on Halloween. I think so. it's actually almost your 10th. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I've been here a long I've time. I've been here like six or seven. So, yeah, so, I, so uh, I have a little longevity in, in, in this town on channel 41, now 46. But we're going to be talking about a festival that's happening up in, uh, or out in Tacopa. Uh, Tacopa's uh, Hot Springs Resort, uh, that's Amy's resort, and that's going to be coming up uh, uh, oh, next no. month. Yes, and, uh, two weeks. Two and, weeks. I'll, and I'll have uh, Amy talk to you about that. on Saturday. And you could tell her, tell everybody out there what, what it's for, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, the show oh. is yours. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, we're hosting a fall festival with uh, vendors uh, to benefit the Southern Inyo Fire Protection District. Um, we're going to have a booth space available for $10. All of the proceeds go to the uh, Southern Inyo Fire Protection District volunteers. We're trying to raise money this year uh, for aux boxes and equipment and training, auxiliary boxes, um, so that uh, different stations or different places throughout our area okay. can have a... That's the only line of defense between, uh, what, Duan Dunes and the Death Valley? Right. Southern uh, so Inyo? Southern Inyo Fire Protection District covers 1,200 square miles, and we have approximately six volunteers right now. <laughs> wow, that's what I was going to ask, was what territory. was your coverage area? Yeah. yeah. Um, How would somebody become involved to become a, a volunteer? Do they have to be trained already? Do you offer training? Um, we we offer training. Well, we are sending... It helps if you live there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big area. Um, we have crews in, uh, Char a crew in Charleston View mm -hmm. um, that have uh, some equipment, and so they can respond to fires. Um, we're working on raising money to send additional folks to training and to bring some more training into the area uh, for the folks that live there so that we can um, share the burden of being on call, the honor of being on call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and but if we, you had two calls at once, that would be really difficult, probably. Well, you have mutual aid, too, from... Uh, we have great mutual aid from yeah. Pahrump, from the folks here and up in Amargosa. In fact, uh, <clears throat> I did training up there in Amargosa with the folks uh, in fire. That was fun. Um, the 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 festival um, the last few years has raised uh, close to five thousand okay. dollars. We have some. Awesome. Yeah, and um, we have some great prizes. We'll be having a raffle. <clears throat> um, some of the prizes are a Pr Valley uh, Winery gift basket, uh, Mountain Falls golf rounds, four rounds of golf, mm -hmm. um, Hacienda Hotel and Casino stay at Hoover Dam, and rafting on the Colorado River's Black Canyon. From Those good prizes. Yeah, yeah, some really great stuff. Uh, beach courtesy of Forever Resorts. Beautiful high-end Fisher space pen bullets made of titanium with the SIFPD logo. <laughs> oh, my God. Fisher space pens are the ones that can write upside down. Those are so cool. <laughs> um, a Grand Canyon coach day trip tour uh, for two. An $800 value. Um, and four open top sightseeing bus tours from the Las Vegas Strip, right all day, on and off at your pleasure. Oh, and fun. more. There are a lot nice. more prizes coming. Now, if, is there still vendor space available if somebody yes. needed a vendor uh -huh. space? And you because could, I notice how cheap it is. Right. $10. So it's, uh, it's really a chance for a community to come out, a yard sale kind of thing. A 10 by 10 space for $10. Um, Pretty much anything goes. We have applications at the resort. You could call 760-852-4420, and uh, we'll send you an application or take your name awesome. down. And we're going to have a great band, Earth Blues, who was out out last last year and in the spring uh, from Venice, California, are coming, and they'll be playing on the outdoor stage at 1 p.m. Um, the Amargosa Opera House is going to be um, doing a food vending 
Um, and they'll be offering turkey legs, chipotle pork chops, and frozen cheesecake on a stick. And um, Mar and the profits are going to go to the firehouse, courtesy of Marta Beckett. She's, uh, our, she's there, the, our last outpost um, mm -hmm. before that. And we'll have very cool T-shirts to sell. Oops, Oops, wrong way. How much Sorry, are the T-shirts? Sorry, Maria. Twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, very cool logo, and it says "I support SIFPD" on the front. And you're wearing one. And I'm wearing one. And on TV, I like it kind of looks like. A, I like the. Black I, I like it in the back, the logo very in the back. Nice. That's very, very nice. Cool. Yes. yes. And you can really get those cool. over at the, uh, awesome. the festival. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be uh, November 12th. Saturday, so November 12th. And Pastel's Bistro will also be open, um, which fabulous fine fare. <laughs> yes. Always a surprise. Fantastic food with mm -hmm. John and Shelley that are, that are there. Mm -hmm. And what happens if you mention If you mention a community, community viewpoint, viewpoint with your entree, you will get a free dessert. So please watch the show and please go out to Tacoma and please go out to uh, Pastel's Bistro. John mm -hmm. and Shelley are open uh, eight days. Uh, they take a siesta from four to six. I know he's open at six o'clock in the evening. They're open six till until uh, they run out of uh, patrons, usually maybe mm -hmm. around 10 or 11 o'clock, and then they're open... 10 a.m. to 10 10? about uh, 10 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. They take yeah. a break and then uh, open at 6 usually. Yes. So, But firehouse days are fun, and they'll a variety of things to do and um, music. What else? It's really <laughs> fun. So shopping... Yeah. Shopping. Barbecue, raffle, food, prizes, Depending music. On the stage, Earth, Earth Blues, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that would be coming. And up you're up. helping. You're you're helping yes. the fire district because that stuff's not cheap, but it's really really important. I mean, equipment. You can have all the volunteers, but really, if you don't have equipment, what are the volunteers going to use mm -hmm. to help ser do their job? So that's right. Um, but definitely, if you do want to be a volunteer, then call me. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh huh. You're like, sure, call me for one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> so Amy has the, uh, the art uh, well, gallery out there also. We have the art gallery. And if you want to know more about volunteering or becoming involved with our fire district, uh, come to the festival and meet the folks that are there. Um, we are undergoing growth and change, and it's all good. Um, so we look forward to having folks come out. We also have art. We'll, we'll be have, um, on the walls will be a new art show that weekend. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, the Desert Through Bay Area Photographers for uh, acclaimed photographers from the Bay Area. Um, it's a, a different eye. Um, uh, what else? Do we have a labyrinth there? Um, there's a playground across the street. Um, not sure what fun filled kid activities, but there will be some fun-filled kid activities. <laughs> I wanted to ask if somebody <clears throat> wanted to go out for the festival and then stay overnight, is there rooms available mm -hmm. or is it getting uh, sold out pretty quick? We have a few rooms left and uh, cabins and we have plenty of camping space. Okay. The band will likely play in the evening too, so um, that's a good reason to hang out. And the hot springs are really great, very relaxing after you run around. You can visit <clears throat> Gina Ranch or Shoshone. For the and there's probably rooms show. right around the corner too. Shoshone's not too yes. far, six miles. Mm -hmm. If you want to take the Shoshone mm -hmm. Inn too. Yeah, the bed and breakfast there. You have another resort in, in mm -hmm. the general area, a hostel. Uh, so there, uh, there should be rooms available. Uh, you can. Can they go on the website? I was just going to say that if you go to the website, and which website would you like them to go to? Uh, Tacopa Hot Springs. Or? Yeah, uh, TacopaHotSprings.org has. Uh, is the website for the resort, and also the Death Valley Chamber of Commerce website is deathvalleychamber.org. Right. So those have both links to different uh, venues over there to uh, for the <laughs> arts in the area, for places to stay, and uh, a lot of different links on there too. Yeah, so uh, the fall festival and <coughs> is coming up Saturday, November twelfth. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you call, you got the banner up there with the phone number, Jeff? 760-852-4420. And you'll find out more information on it. To get there, it's very easy. Just go down 
Uh, you read my mind. I was just going <laughs> to say, how do you get okay, there? Okay, then you talk about it. Go ahead. 372. Then. Just keep on going till you can't go any farther. You get <laughs> Shoshone. Make a left-hand turn in, what is it? Five miles. About five miles, and you just make a, a, a light left. left, and that's the, the road into the Hot Springs area. And, and if you do stay overnight, you could join uh, Len Warren's Bird Walk, which is a free oh goodness, offering, yes. and Shoshone at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Meet at the Crow Bar, and Len Warren is a, a fascinating uh, leader and birder and knows all kinds of fun and he's in, things. In Shoshone? Or, he's an ornithologist, too, mm -hmm. right? So he's, and he's been on the show. He knows so much about that area and about the birds there so and like about a, their habitat. What's an ornithologist? What, what is that? Well, that's the, the bird. Study of birds. Okay. Bird. <laughs> The bird good. guy, yeah. The bird so, guy, but he's really smart, and he knows all about their habitats, and it's really interesting. But that's yes. a whole other show. All right. Well, thank you very much, Amy, for coming here this evening, and we'll see more of you in Tacopa. Thank you. And uh, do you have any questions before we go to the thank next you. Thank segment? Thank you. Thank you. We can't all wait right. to see you there. All Saturday, right. November you, 12th, 10 And then we'll, we'll come back to our next segment then. All right. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. And welcome back again, and it's still the Halloween special. I'm John Pollock, your, your re-host, with Maria Hurst here, or the host, the Hurst. And we, and we have <laughs> the Mark, Hurst host. Yes, and we have Mark Hudson with us. He's the the master gardener uh, from uh, the gardener special, specialist, what have you, over at the, the Star Nursery in town. Um, now that the weather's changing, we will... By the time in a couple of days, it'll be it'll be cooler. Uh, fall planting is uh, is here, uh, so we don't have when we when we put things out there, we don't we it won't burn anymore like it did in the summertime. Um, what's on your menu, let's say over over there, and what should we be planting at this time of the year? Is this a good time to plant? It's a great time to plant most things. Um, it's a good time for fruit trees, okay. roses. Lilacs, forsythia, uh, your deciduous trees and shrubs, primarily. Pines are doing great. Uh, we should be getting a bunch more in pretty soon. Uh, but the um, deciduous trees are really, really good to put in this time of year. What is deciduous? Those are the ones deciduous that Deciduous lose. lose their leaves, yeah. Right. So, really, this is a good time right now? Uh, it's not a good time in December? Um, actually, we have between mid-September, when the temperatures get moderated a little bit, mm -hmm. all the way through winter to, to plant. Out here? Yep. We, you know, we're, we're not like the Midwest where the ground I'm freezes thinking, yeah. three feet deep, you know, mm -hmm. uh, all the water's locked up and the plants desiccate. Um, here in uh, Pahrump, southern Nevada in general, we are very lucky in the sense that we plant this time of year. You put in a one-gallon root ball, and by spring, you have a much larger root ball. The top growth starts uh, sending out that new growth. You don't have competing root systems and top systems oh, okay. competing against each other. Well, what about the palm trees? Is it still a good time for them, or is it getting kind of... Palms... Because it's kind of rough when it gets really cold yeah, here. Yeah, we, we can plant, but I don't recommend it. And I'm going to get into trouble for that. But, <laughs> um, what we, palms are planted going into the heat and through the heat of summer. Okay. And it uh, gives them the best chance of right. uh, growing because like in the wintertime, there's a gentleman that has uh, probably around 40 of them on his property on game bird. And then we had a, it was a cold snap. I thought he lost every one of them. So, and you said you shouldn't take the branches off for a while either. Right. You let those uh, burnt branches go until you have about three to five sets of new leaves coming out. So anyway, it's hard to do for a lot of people. Yeah, but it took because they want looked, to clean it off. Yeah, right. it looks okay. tacky. And so yeah. he did that, and the, he, they they look real good. I thought he mm -hmm. lost all because they looked well, really bad. You take a look at those uh, fan palms we have out by the driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, Mid-January, they look terrible. Uh, they look like they were dead this year, and they're green and lush and beautiful right now. Is it really worth cool. it sometimes, you ask yourself? You know, uh, 
I'm not a big proponent of palm trees in southern Nevada, uh, you know, but people like them. People like that tropical feel. I know Brian Brown, uh, he's a good friend of mine, he has a China Ranch, they're, they're there to produce well, the crop. dang palms. Yeah. Yes. So there's an actual reason for them over there. Yeah. He had one that fell over a couple of weeks ago, one of his original palms, and I asked one of his workers, Steve, hey, did you, uh, did you, you fix that? And he says, yeah, we picked up, we put it across the road where it was, and, uh, you know, it's easy to, the, the roots are close together. Mm -hmm. And the roots, if they're damaged, they regenerate very quickly. But you figure if you got a 60-foot palm tree, you have to have an extensive root system to hold that up. Well, this one, these are his old old ones. They were, it was on an angle like this mm -hmm. anyway, so it just flopped over yeah. like that. But, uh, yeah, they just replanted it, and hopefully it'll, it'll be better because it'll be nice and straight now. But, yeah, there's, there's a reason for his palms over there, so mm -hmm. that, you know, he's, he's making a profit out of them. He's selling the, the dates, and it, it, he has a destination down there mm -hmm. also because yeah. of that. But it's kind of rough if you if you're planting them because and if you're old, you're not going to see them grow too much. <laughs> well, the actually the palm like cacti. That, yeah, the the palm that does the best out here is the Mediterranean fan palm. Is that wait which is multi trunked? The, the short, which is the short? Is that the fat one that has one? like that the skin or big uh, fan like the? Yeah, well, they have a fan palm like a Mexican fan palm. Okay. But they'll have a main uh, trunk and then a bunch of shoots that come out and they'll look like hmm. a bush. And which one is that? The Mediterranean, Mediterranean fan. It's that hardy is... to about six degrees. Okay, so that so that one is very well suited for this environment. And you can see it grow from year to year. Uh, about four inches of trunk a year, so it's very slow. Okay. But um, you take a Mexican fan palm, and they're cute when they're in a five-gallon pot, and ten years down the road they're forty feet tall, and you're going, "What am I going to do with this thing?" Oh, okay. Right. And uh, so that's why, you, you know, on the 4th of July in Vegas, and a lot of palms catch fire because of bottle rockets and such. <laughs> so anyway. they're 40 feet high catching them all. Yeah, yeah well, there, there's that. There's all that dead foliage hanging there. Mm -hmm. So they get expensive in the long run. Yes, you have like uh, Wolfenstein, uh, Mr. Wolfenstein down on the road over there. Mm -hmm. uh, is it once or twice a year that they're out there with the, the cherry picker uh, pruning those yep. uh, trees? Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's costly to, mm -hmm. to make. I mean, if you have the money and you like the palms and it's worth it to you, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But as it some dresses point, up the area there. Oh know, yeah. So that it's good. He's got the grass laid there out. You know, it's, oh, so yeah. it's, it dresses up that that portion of Pearl real well. So it does. You're doing good there. But, so uh, okay. It's also a good time to plant flowers. Uh, pansies, uh, snapdragons, dock, violas. Did you say roses? Roses. Okay. Yep. They're blooming over by our library, so it's oh, a little yeah. cold in the, in the evenings, but uh, we have new uh, uh, petals coming out. Mm -hmm. You'll have new growth coming out, you'll have new buds starting to form. Uh, they'll sustain their foliage quite frequently until it's below freezing uh, at night, because it's not so much how cold you get, it's how long you're there. And so they they have to have a certain amount of cold anyway for them to go into a state of dormancy and we want to we have to force them into dormancy sometimes hmm. so if if somebody was to plant roses i'm just thinking ahead mm -hmm. if somebody was to plant roses now would they get flowers maybe by the time for valentine's day oh valentine's day um, well it's not very many months away March? it's like valentine's four months days. three it's actually like three and a half months away yeah four probably months. not no okay. uh, the ground out here hasn't warmed enough and the growth hasn't really started coming back out. If you have a protected area with uh, block walls or a lot of okay. concrete or something, Shade it might. Shade or something, okay. No, you'll have to have a lot of sun Okay. Uh, at that point. So you just want outer protection, mm -hmm. not, a, not right. over top. Yeah, okay. and that's to get early bloom like that. And if you do, you know, no guarantee you'll get that. Okay. Vegetables, anything to plant right now? Um, I just planted 20 spinach plants mm. uh, last night. Is that in like a raised bed? Mm, no, I did it in containers because of where I live right now. Okay. So, right, right. but um, the vegetable fall veggie season pretty much is over. We can probably still get some, but you really have to have those vegetables in about 30 days prior to the first freeze. Okay. 
And if I remember correctly, my computer indicated that we might get down to 34 sometime this week with this, this cold breeze coming, coming through. Like, yeah, okay. Now that brings up something, <clears throat> if I might. Um, during the winter, when the cold, uh, we have a sudden drop in temperature, go out and water your plants. Like they do down in uh, Florida when they have a cold snap not the orange. So, yeah, not so much over spraying them, but watering the roots themselves because mm -hmm. a cold snap is always preceded by winds. You have that change in oh, front of okay. the systems coming okay. through. And okay. it will dry out even deciduous trees. So you need to give that extra shot of water. Even if you water the day before, water them again on the day of the wind. Okay. And it will really help to bring them, get them to survive. Now, on the doing that with your trees and plants, how about grasses? I mean, how um, do you keep your grasses which to... Which ones? Like, you know, like, like turf, lawn, lawns? Like, yeah. Water later in the day. Later in the day. Yeah. Because uh, usually they say, you know, don't water in the sun, but, mm -hmm. but I know that does change throughout the year. Yeah. During, uh, especially out here, we freeze a lot more than Vegas does. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're watering probably not before 10 or 11 in the morning okay. and probably not any later than 2 in the afternoon okay. for a lawn because so as you a want rule, that maybe to dry lunchtime? out some. Yeah. You want okay. it to dry out some between, before it freezes again. Okay. I've got. Cool. That's a good idea. We only got a couple minutes left. Okay. I got this pot at home, and it's got. Uh, I brought from the Midwest my uh, mother-in-law's tongues. Mm -hmm. They're totally about six feet tall almost, and they're crowding the bucket. Can I separate those, or would, yeah. would I be hurting them? No, you can separate those. And then just put them in the dirt again. It's it's hard to kill mother-in-law's tongues, is from what I. They understand. are house plant. But they, you know, they're, they're hardy for the end. They are the, very hardy. Yeah, I know. Cause they're, they, they're a tough plant. Believe me, I forgot to water a lot of things and everything else died, but yeah. not them. <laughs> yeah, my wife is good about watering the house plants. I'm not. So. Now, since I'm so annoying with this, but what do you never, ever plant? What do you never, ever plant? <laughs> I had uh, to get it in there. Well... Salt cedar. Never ever. Oh God. Salt Which cedar, one yeah. now? The salt cedar. Oh, salt cedar. Never ever plant. Yes. I just, I'm so sick about it. Like, yeah. I'm so annoying. I'm sure everybody's annoyed of hearing me say that, but get rid of them. Don't ever plant them. They are considered a noxious weed by the state yes. of Nevada. So, and we can't say that enough. Yeah. So we'd like to thank you. We're in our last minute for viewing us, putting up with me for the last eight years. Hopefully, I'll be here another year or, or two. I'm in my senior years now, so, uh, but thank you for watching all these years, and uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you, Maria, uh, for coming along with along the ride, and all, we always have uh, guests that pertain to uh, the community, that's why we're called Community Viewpoint, things to do, places to go, uh, issues that uh, deal with the, uh, the town, and, and the, the valley, in the area here, the mm -hmm. environment, yes, yeah, so. That's why we're a community viewpoint, and it's uh, not a type of a show to be uh, uh, point and counterpoint. To the, we're, no, we we're do all fun stuff. Yeah, with this fun, is information. good, and information. So we hope you enjoy Happy. that, and we'll be coming to you for hopefully many years in the future. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, Maria. Thank, thank you, you, Jeff. Thank you. And then we will be seeing you again next week. And so scary days and something nice or what <laughs> and be safe tonight please put your children in uh reflective clothing or use reflective tape and have flashlights and don't be texting when you're going across route 160 because yes. you might be hit by a car and please be very very careful mm -hmm. and have a happy fun halloween good night folks good night